Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on plagiarism. Um, this is a very important topic for all college students, especially those enrolled in History 1301 and History 1302. Now what is plagiarism? Um, many people don't know what it is. They think it's just copying word for word. And the definition of plagiarism in the Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, the 10th edition, is to steal and pass off the ideas or words of others as one's own without crediting the source, to provide as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. Um, the Chicago Manual of Style defines it as ethics, copyright laws, and courtesy to readers require authors to identify sources of direct quotations and of any facts or opinions not generally known to or easily checked. So this is any information that you did not already know and it has to be cited. So please be aware of this um, when you are uh, writing your research paper here over the next five weeks. So what does those definitions of plagiarism mean for us, people who are in, academic, in an academic setting um, taking History 1301 or History 1302? Well, essentially what it says is that if you're presenting someone else's thoughts as your own, it's intellectual theft. It's no less stealing than if you walked into a store and shoplift. You're stealing someone else's idea and presenting it as your own. So how do we avoid this? How do we make sure that we don't do this type of thing? Well, as the, as the uh, slide says, we cite, cite, cite. You make sure that any time you are using someone else's idea or information, you give them credit. Now, there's two types of plagiarism. And the first one is deliberate plagiarism and this is the most severe academically this is the one that usually gets most people in in trouble ends up getting them either to fail the class um, or be dismissed from the college and first a, an example of deliberate plagiarism is if you rewrite from books or articles if you take a source and you copy it but you re put it in your own words well, a lot of times you were told in, in school that that was okay. That's not true. Um, if you take someone else's information and just put it in your own words, it's still not yours. It's the person who wrote it. You're just taking it and doing a synopsis of it. So you've still got to make sure that you cite their material. So if you take, a, I don't know, a sentence out of one of your sources and you decide to reword it, but you're going to use the thought. You still have to put a citation mark for that. Also, copying and pasting from web pages and online sources to create a patchwork writing. A lot of students do this. They write in patchwork. And what I mean by that is they simply copy and paste different sentences and put them together. Well, it's very easy to tell when you do this. Don't be um, confused and think that we don't catch you guys doing this because we read it out loud and we can tell that there's no transition between sentences. Um, I will tell you the worst case of copy and paste I've ever had is I had a student one time turn me in a research paper and it was very, very well written except for the far, uh, part that it had um, headings in it and it had blue hyperlinks in it. The person had copied and pasted their entire research paper including the citations from Wikipedia. Um, that is also a, a, an example of deliberate plagiarism. Another one is buying, downloading, or borrowing a paper. You are not allowed to buy a paper online from one of those websites. Uh, most of the time now, we have them stored and we can compare them. Downloading one off the internet for free or borrowing even one of your friend's papers. Technically... Um, plagiarism even is defined, and we'll talk about this in a minute, 
of using a, a previous paper that you've written. So, so be careful when you do something like that. Now, what is accidental plagiarism? Now, this isn't nearly as bad. Um, this is not knowing when and how to cite. Now, hopefully by the time we're done this class in five weeks, you'll have a better idea of when and how to cite a paper. Also, not knowing how to paraphrase or summarize. A lot of students aren't sure what to do when it comes to um, information that they really are attached to and they're not sure what they should do with it, so they'll just do it as is. Um, it's okay to paraphrase and summarize what an author says. Just make sure you give them credit. Make sure you give them a footnote or an endnote, but it's okay to put it in your own words. Not knowing what common knowledge is. Now, this is an important idea. What is common knowledge? Well, common knowledge are it's, it's information that does not have to be cited. And the best way to describe this, and this is showing my age, I'm 36, but um, if you look at back in the old days, and I say old days, I was a kid when they had encyclopedias. And I mean real encyclopedias, book encyclopedias, Funk and Wagnall and Encyclopedia Britannica. If the information is in the encyclopedia, it doesn't need to be cited. If it's not in the encyclopedia, chances are it's not common knowledge and it would need to be cited. So if it's in the encyclopedia, no citations. If it's not in the the encyclopedia citations. Now, where this is becoming obsolete of an idea is online encyclopedias like Wikipedia. Wikipedia now goes way in depth and it has a lot of things that are not common knowledge. You'll even see sometimes that Wikipedia actually has citation marks. Um, that's, that's a problem. That's why we also tell you don't use Wikipedia. Finally, recycling an old paper. This is plagiarism. You're plagiarizing yourself. If you write a paper and you turn it in for a grade, you can't then turn around and turn it in to another professor for a grade unless you have prior permission to do so. Case in point, me. Um, if I write a book, say I write a book on the Titanic, and I decide to write another book on the Titanic, I can't copy and paste word for word and republish it. A, I'm plagiarizing myself, and B, I'm probably going to be in breach of contract with some kind of publishing house. So be careful when you're doing something like that. It's okay to rework an idea. It's okay to redo a paper and make it a completely different paper, but you can't recycle an old paper and have the same theme and word for word. So be careful on that. The deliberate plagiarism is a big deal. Accidental plagiarism, except for that last one, recycling an old paper, that's that's a little worse. But those other three are more forgivable. And there are things that if we catch you guys doing, there's more leeway with um, helping you versus some kind of academic punishment. Now, we went over this um, in the course syllabus, but it's important to go over it again, the Galveston College Academic Integrity Policy. Each student is charged with the responsibility of maintaining scholastic integrity. When written assignments require excerpts from material published by others, the student must give full credit to the author to avoid the possibility of plagiarism. If you want more information on that, you should refer to the Student Rights and Responsibilities section. That's section F of the Student Code of Conduct. Any student who's in violation of this uh, academic integrity or scholastic integrity policy for plagiarism or cheating falls within the realm of student-faculty relations and is subject to a faculty recommendation to the college administration. And that can be for the loss of credit, for the assignment, for the exam, for the unit of work, failure in the entire course, or dismissal from the college. And really, honestly, for me, it just depends on which type of plagiarism it is. If it's academic plagiarism, I take some points off. It's a learning experience. If it's deliberate plagiarism, the penalty is m more severe. So what is my policy? Well, for accidental plagiarism, students who uh, co commit some type of accidental plagiarism will lose an automatic 25% grade for the research paper for faulty citations or for using vast amounts of information without citing. You are given the benefit of the doubt for minor incidents. 
um, if there's a sentence or two. But major issues will result in the points being deducted accordingly. Um, I consider these to be learning issues. Everything is addressed by the materials in the research assignment section of the course in Canvas. So none of this should be a surprise. Also, if you have any questions, please get a hold of me and we can talk about it in private. Or we can set up a group and we can all talk together, uh, Google Connect or one of those, and we can talk about it. But for accidental plagiarism, you know, I give you the benefit of the doubt for the most part. But if it starts getting severe where it's really bad, I do take 25% off. And that part that you forfeit is from the citation section of the um, rubric. Now, deliberate plagiarism. Well, for deliberate plagiarism, this is one of the worst things in academia. As I said in the, um, I don't remember if it was in the um, syllabus or if it was in the research assignment um, instructions, but this is the same as stealing like your neighbor's car or a pack of gum. Um, the work of others is their work. It's their intellectual property, and you have to give them credit. And I will take no exceptions to that. Um, if it's not your original work, you have to cite them. When I write articles and I write books, I assume that they are mine and that no one's going to steal them and um, publish them as their own. And it's not fair for, for you to do that to them. But it's very simple not to do this, and we will talk about this in a later lecture. Students caught purchasing papers online or using another student's paper from a previous semester or copying and pasting directly from websites will see a grade of zero earned for their research paper. And again, this is um, no exceptions. Um, I will allow you to defend yourself. If I, if I catch someone doing it, what I normally do is I email them and say, hey, look, here's the deal. Here's what your paper's showing me. What do you have to say for yourself? And I, I listen to their argument. And if, they, if it seems like, you know, it was a legit argument, I'll take the 25% off and, and or, or make them redo it. I've also made students redo it if it was very severe. Um, but not for purchasing a paper online, not for um, copying and pasting directly from a website. There is no exception for that. If you get caught doing that, it is an automatic zero on the paper. Um, other, other issues that are pl blatant plagiarism or deliberate plagiarism is a case-by-case -case basis, but for those two, it's an automatic zero. Now, how can we tell that something is uh, plagiarized? Well, first of all, um, not going to get into all the specifics of it, but I have ways of being able to tell. First of all, the discussion boards are a good idea as to whether or not you've plagiarized. By the time you turn in the research paper, I have a pretty good idea of how you write. Um, people think they write differently when they do a research paper versus when they do something else. But the reality of it is essays, research papers, discussion boards, um, the essay for the exam, they all pretty much line up um, intellectually and scholastically. So if you write very poorly in your discussions and you write terrible essays for your exam, chances are your research paper is not going to be a 100%. And yet sometimes that's exactly what we get, a 100% essay or research paper for someone who's a C writer at best. So it's easy to tell sometimes just depending on how the writer is. Another way we can tell is if I suspect it, I copy and paste paragraphs, th throw it into Google or Yahoo, and um, lo and behold, it'll pop up the book or the website that you got it from. But we also have another tool. And this is called Grammarly. And you've probably seen it recently. It's been being advertised on um, TV. I thought that was odd that they were actually advertising something like that on TV. But it's been on TV quite a bit. Um, what is Grammarly? Well, it's something that is an online program to allow students to work on your papers. And it's actually really cool because what you could do is it has grammar tools and revision tools where you can copy your and paste your paper into Grammarly and it can proofread it for you. And it can tell you, well, this isn't in the right tense or this is a bad sentence, reword it. But it also has a citation audit. 
It will actually tell you before you submit it to me whether you need to go back and rework your paper. Also, you're required to submit your research assignment when it's totally done in Grammarly. That way I can see the um, similarity report. And it will actually tell me not only how much of the paper matches word for word another source, but it will then tell me what sources they are. And it will let me click on them and bring a split screen where it'll have both uh, sources, your writing and the source that it says that you are copying from. Grammarly is free. I will post some access information on how to access it. Well, this is the end of the lecture on plagiarism. I hope this helped um, uh, clarify things for anybody who might be confused what plagiarism is or never really knew what plagiarism was and, and was a little worried about it. Again, I don't expect any of you to really do this. Most students are very, very studious about this and, and try their best not to do it. Um, it's more of a just want to go over it to make sure it doesn't happen type of thing. If anybody has any questions on uh, plagiarism or Grammarly or what is expected of them, please throw me an email at sedler at gc.edu or give me a call. Have a good day.